had a guy that I was discipling in YWAM. I did YWAM after I got saved. And I was discipling this dude in YWAM. He was a young guy. He's only 15 years old at the time when I met him. He's from a rough background. His, his um, brothers were in gangs. His dad was in jail. His mom was a heroin addict. And uh, rough, rough background. His grandparents bought him a PlayStation gaming system when he was 15 years old, and it was his escape from the pain of his life. He goes to school, gets out of school, comes home, his gaming system is gone. He can't find his gaming system anywhere. Goes all over the house, goes into his mother's room. When he gets into his mother's room, he sees that she's ODing on drugs. She had sold his gaming system to go get her drugs. So he calls the police, he calls his brothers who were in the gangs. The brothers beat the paramedics to the, uh, to the house. They see him in the fetal position in the corner and he's crying in the corner in the fetal position. And they say, get up, get up. Social services is gonna come pick you up. Get up, come with us, stop that crying. He can't quit crying because he's witnessed his mama there o- overdosing. So because he can't quit crying, they, they start beating him. Man up. This is life. Man up. See, people are only walking in the light that they have, and there's a cost to putting your light under a basket of fear. Somebody's going to go home and beat their wife tonight because they don't know what they don't know. They're only walking in the light that they have. This stuff is happening all over the pain that's in the world, all over the place, all the time. And Christians are just going to church, going through the motions. It's not to bring condemnation. It's actually to call us to this place of humility and repentance to realize why are we coming to empowered? We're coming to empower, to receive power, to be a witness. So that we can become a solution to these hells that people are living in all over Tampa Bay. Amen. All over wherever you're coming from. Here he is and they're beating him. And he decides that day, I'll never cry again. I'm going to be a real man. So fast forward, I'm discipling and the Holy Spirit starts moving in our midst. And some people are crying and some people are falling down and some people are shaking. And and he's over here doing this. And I'm thinking, that's a weird Holy Spirit manifestation, man. I lived in Bethel before at Reading. And I'm like, man, I've seen some stuff. That's kind of weird. And I just leave him alone. And he's like, like doing this stuff. And, um. A few days go by and I say, hey man, how come every time the Holy Spirit starts moving, you do this thing? Is that the Holy Spirit? And he's like, nah, man, that's how I stop my tears. And he told me the story of what I just told you. I take him into the bathroom and I say, Rich, I want you to look into this mirror and I want you to read this, this word. I'm going to read this word to you. And he looked into the mirror in the bathroom and I read him the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. And I read to him how Paul, with many tears, was, would pray. And man after man, and the David, and the Psalms, and, the pray, and the, all these men of God weeping. And at the end, I said, I want you to know something. And I'm going to tell you what I told him. I said, I want you to know something. Jesus Christ loves you because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, just because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, just because he loves you, 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 just because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you. I want you to know he loves you just because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you 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 just because he loves you and there's nothing you can do about it he's always loved you he's always gonna love you and there's nothing you can do about it he loves you and Richard began to weep and he went from the guy who never weeps to guy who always cries anybody know what I'm talking about you, know, you guys know somebody like that. You just say the name of Jesus, and they're like, oh. He was that guy, man. I love those guys, man, because those guys typically are the ones who are the most on fire, man. They are tender for the Lord, man. I mean, and that's how Richard, I mean, he would go, and he would go leave the, the conference, this conference. He would leave and go lead, lead 15 people to Jesus and bring them back, man. He was on fire, and he was a leader, so he was leading everybody else to the Lord, Till about two weeks from the end of the school, 
he started rebelling. See, what I didn't realize is that he had been abandoned by every father figure in his life, just kind of like I was. And I didn't realize it, but because he had been abandoned by them, he had decided I was like a father figure to him. He was going to abandon me before I could abandon him. And so he started to rebel on purpose, and I didn't realize it. He just started getting in trouble over and over, doing really bad stuff. And he was taking everybody else in the school down with him. And I got to send these students back to their parents. And I'm like, man, I got to send him home because he's messing everybody else up. And it's breaking my heart. He's my favorite student, but I'm going to send him home. And I go to the other leader and I said, man, I got I to gotta send him home. I'm so glad for her because she knew the Father's heart of God. See, we give up on people way too easy. Love never fails. Love never fails. It never gives up. We give up on people. The disciples said, how many times do we have to forgive? Jesus says, seven times 70. In other words, until it's complete. She said, no, Richie, one more chance. Give him another chance. I said, all right, one more chance. I go down to where this young man was and I said, hey, why are you doing this, man? I love you. And he exploded at me. I don't even know what love is. You say you love me. You say God loves me. You say love, 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 all this love. I don't even know what love is. And I'm so glad for my advantage, the Holy Spirit, because I explode right back in his face. And I say, Richard, there's a gun right here. One of your gangbanger brother's friends has a gun. Either you're going to take the bullet or I'm taking the bullet. Who's taking the bullet? And he began to look away. I said, no, Richard, look me in the eyes. Who's taking the bullet? You or me? And he began to weep. He said, Richie, I take that bullet for you. I said, don't you dare tell me you don't know what love is. You just love me. Love looks like something. Unless you sacrifice yourself, you can't love. What Lord told me in my dream last night. It's your message for tonight. It's to follow the way, the truth, and the life. It's to follow love. Love looks like a man hanging on a cross. He's God. Love looks like God beaten, bruised, bleeding, abandoned by all his friends and family, being mocked, marred beyond recognition. And he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This is what love looks like. And he's calling us to follow him, the way, the truth, and the life. He's calling you, he's calling me to say, I want to follow Jesus. See, if you try to save your life, you'll lose your life. But if you lose your life for my sake, then you'll find your life. If you want to be my disciple, you got to take up your cross and follow me. Amen? This is what God is calling us to do. He's calling us to lay down our life. He's calling you to a fresh surrender. He's calling you to put your life on the altar. And as you put your life on the altar and you lay down your life, it's his good pleasure to pour out his fire upon you, upon your heart. Amen? God wants to pour out his fire tonight. Hey, I'm Richie. Hopefully you enjoyed that clip. I'm here with my son, Jonah. And I'm excited to see you, hopefully, in Oklahoma City for greater things. You know, it's great to watch these videos, but it's even better to be in person. I've been at these many, many of these Global Awakening gatherings, and I love to bring my family, love to bring the kids, because we want to not only have encounters for ourselves, but we want our children to experience the Lord. And we want our children to see us experiencing the Lord. Right now, God is moving in families, and I hope to see you and your family there at Greater Things.